Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna take another look at probability, we're gonna still be looking at factorials, and we're gonna see how we can use them in fractions and how they actually, they're gonna simplify very nice for us when we're solving some complex problems. So let's jump right into this example problem where I have three example problems here that I wanna solve using our knowledge of factorials. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom in on this first guy here so we can really look at what we have going on. We have 10 factorial being divided by eight factorial. And I know what some of y'all might be thinking in your brain, maybe 10 factorial over eight factorial, maybe that'll just become, I don't know, two factorial? Well, no, that's not gonna be the case. Or, oh, maybe, maybe we can simplify that fraction and maybe we can simplify it to five factorial over four factorial because that's what 10 over eight would reduce to. Well, no, that's not the case for that either. Actually, this is gonna simplify a much different way. And what we wanna do is we wanna expand that factorial out. We wanna show what is 10 factorial and what is eight factorial so we can understand what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write this out really quick. I'm gonna need a long fraction bar there. And on top, 10 factorial is just 10 times nine times eight times seven, times six, times four, all the way down to one, right? That is what a factorial is. Well, that's 10 factorial up top. On the bottom, I'm gonna need to write out eight factorial, which is eight times seven, times six, all the way down, one number less, until we get to one. So that is the problem that we have. 10 factorial over eight factorial. Some of you might already know what's about to happen. Look what we have there. I have my string of numbers on top that are multiplying, my string of numbers on the bottom that are multiplying. And whenever we have a fraction where we have numbers on the top multiplying, numbers on the bottom multiplying, we can start to cancel out any like terms, right? As I look at this, I see an eight in the denominator, an eight in the numerator. Well, when those divide, they're just gonna make one. And the seven divided by the seven is just gonna make one. Look what ends up happening with this fraction. All of those matching numbers end up just being erased. They all reduce down to one, which leaves us with this problem, with our fraction now only having a numerator, and that numerator is just 10 times our nine, which does make, let me zoom out a little bit, 90. Look at this problem. It looked very complicated at first, right? especially when I made that long fraction out. But what's super nice is the numbers on the top and the bottom, if they match up, you just cancel them all out and you're left with the 10 and the nine on top. And you can kind of see that in this fraction, right? If we're using our brains, if we turn them on for a second, that might start to click for some of you. Well, yeah, because in 10 factorial, think about it this way, 10 factorial is really just 10 times nine times eight factorial, right? All of this stuff afterwards is just eight factorial. Then of course those eight factorials will cancel. Okay, all right, let's see how we can use this in another problem. And we'll try this bottom one right here. Now I do not want us to write this all out because that's gonna be insane, right? Think about this fraction that we would have. On the top we would have 70 times 69 times 68 times 67 we got to go all the way until we end up at three times two times one. That's going to be intense. I think some of you might be seeing exactly what we could do here. On the bottom, we have 68 factorial. So I could start with 68 times 67 all the way down to three times two times one. I think we can do exactly what we just did for this problem. Look at that. Any matching numbers we want to cross out. My 68's become a one, my 67's become a one. All the numbers in between here are going to cancel out. When we finally end up at three times two times one, again, for this problem, we're left with just these two numbers, 70 times 69. I think we need a calculator for this one. 70, whoops, not 770, just 70 times 69 ends up being 4830. That ends up being the final answer for that huge, complicated, messy fraction. It actually wasn't even that messy because of the factorials. It allows us to cancel out all of those matching terms. 
Now, just for the record, it's not always gonna be two numbers here. It just so happens that there were two numbers left over because both of these were two numbers apart. Okay, that's why that happened like that. Okay, you always just, just gonna cancel out what you have. Now, let's look at this final one here. This final example is a little different than the rest because it has two factorials on the bottom, but that's okay. We can still work this out. I don't think it's gonna be as nice as the other problems were. We might have to do an extra step, but it's nothing that we can't handle when we know what factorials are. So seven factorials on top. So I need to write out seven times six times five times four times three times two and times one. On the bottom, first we have four factorial. So that is four times three times two times one. After that though, we do also have a three factorial. So I need to punch that in as well. Okay, I have to show that I have my four factorial with my three factorial. Now let's see, is there anything that we can cancel out? I'm so sure that some of you are already seeing it. Look at the end here. The threes, the twos, the ones, they cancel out, okay? Now the rest of them aren't gonna cancel out as nicely, but I still think we can cancel some stuff out because look at this. I'm gonna have the four and this four cancel out. They're not right above each other, but that's fine. This is a fraction. We can still cancel them out. And I don't really need the one, right? The one is just there because that's it's included in the factorial, but I don't really need to have it. So look there. I have three numbers on the top. We end up with seven, whoop, not seven dot, seven times six times five over three times two. And some of you might be seeing that there is one final thing that we can cancel out here. Look at that denominator, three times two. Isn't three times two the same thing as six? And if three times two is just six, well then I already have a six on the top. So that means this one and the bottom are going to cancel because those both represent six. So I'm really just left with seven times five, which ends up being 35. Look at that. This was probably, I would say, the more complicated looking of our three examples it ended up with the smallest number as its problem, as its answer, because of just the way the stuff cancels out. And that's why some students, or why I, like factorials. Factorials seem scary at the start, I get it. But once you start playing with them and using them, and you end up with these fractions, it's so nice because stuff will start to cancel out, making these problems a lot easier for you to solve. It's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.